Okay, so those red wigglers that are in your worm bin, they may not be red wigglers. We're going to cover that today on this short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill and I'm the owner of the Urban Worm Company. So the red wiggler is the most common composting worm in uh, North America. It's generally what I consider to be the best choice for the most the the, the widest range of vermicomposters. It's the cheapest. It's uh, adaptable to the widest range of conditions, and it's just the easiest uh, easiest to work with. But a lot of people who think they have red wigglers actually have a uh, a species called the Indian blue, which is also called Perionyx excavatus. This is a similar worm. It looks the same. It, uh, it has the same function and it generally behaves the same. So the question is, is why do we care? Why would you care uh, whether you have red wigglers or Indian blues in your worm bin? So the first reason that you would care is just the principle. You bought a certain species and you would expect that you were going to get that certain species from your worm vendor. Uh, a lot of people are just kind of irritated that what they thought were red wigglers are actually Indian blues that they just purchased. The other reason why you might care is worm reproduction. Uh, because a lot of people are going to buy less worms than what their worm bin will ultimately hold. So for somebody like me, I sell the Urban Worm Bag. It has four square feet, which means it can hold anywhere from four to six to maybe eight pounds uh, when it is full. Um, and that's when it's got a full mature micro population and, and worm population. I never tell anybody to start with that much. I say buy one to two pounds and let the populations grow out. Well, if you ended up having, let's say you bought one pound, but it was a half a pound of red wigglers and a half a pound of Indian blues, which often happens because the species gets kind of intermingled with one another, then they're not going to reproduce as quickly because worm species, for the most part, do not interbreed. So you're not going to get a red wiggler uh, breeding with an Indian blue. So you've effectively cut your reproductive capacity in half if you have different species in your worm bin. So the main reason you're going to care about the species that you have in your worm bin, and especially if they are Indian blues, is Indian blues have this nasty tendency to, to do this mass jailbreak. They try, to, they try to leave your bin all at once, often in response to uh, a change in barometric pressure. So if you have a, an oncoming thunderstorm, uh, the barometric pressure is going to drop. And something about this, and I don't know what it is, makes them freak out and they just all up and leave. And so unless you have a, a tightly enclosed worm bin, you're, you may wake up to find that your worm bin, your worms are scattered all over the floor uh, in your garage or your, God forbid, your kitchen. Uh, so that is a nasty surprise to some people when 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 that happens. Uh, that is that is probably the main reason why you actually care whether you have red wigglers or Indian blues. So the trick now is how do we tell apart the Indian blue from the red wiggler? Uh, it's difficult at first, but once you see the differences, you can't unsee them. So it's actually pretty simple. One of the things here, they're both small worms. They again are they look similar. The red wiggler is going to be a little tend to be a little bit fatter than the Indian blue. It, it, it's, a, it's a very tiny distinction and probably not the easiest way to tell them apart. The red wiggler also has very prominent banding. Uh, it's, the, it's basically the, almost like the striping that goes around the body of the worm and basically separates the different segments of the worm. And that banding is yellowish and it gets very yellow towards the tail. So the, the uh, yellow tail of a red wiggler is actually one of its telltale signs. The other, the other way to tell, to tell too is the clitellum. So the clitellum, for those of you that don't know, is the fleshy part uh, of the earthworm that everybody associates with earthworms. When you see these cartoon earthworms, they all have these big, uh, those big bands. Well, that's called a clitellum. Uh, the clitellum on the red wiggler is going to be raised and it's going to be a lighter kind of fleshy color. The Indian blue, on the other hand, is going to have a clitellum that's flush with its body, and it's actually kind of difficult to see, and it actually can tend to be darker uh, than the rest of the worm's body. Uh, the other thing too, and again, this is one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. You've, it it's, it's really easy to tell, is that the uh, Indian blue tends to be a little bit more active, but when it moves, it elongates itself. It probably uh, it, it, it can double its own length while it's moving. It has this weird kind of accordion style uh, manner that it kind of moves across the surface, much more pronounced than uh, the red wiggler. Okay, so look, if you're happy with what's going on in your worm bin, don't worry about it. 
Red Wigglers, Indian Blues, no big deal. Like I said, a lot of people actually like Indian Blues for their composting ability over the Red Wigglers. They tend to be very active uh, and tend to be voracious vermicomposters, especially in slightly warmer temperatures than the Red Wiggler might uh, otherwise enjoy. But if you have had this issue where worms have all of a sudden tried to escape your worm bin, uh, especially at the onset of a thunderstorm, then you may have Indian blues in your bin. So go ahead, uh, open up your bin, go ahead and look at them, inspect them. The one thing I'll tell you is that uh, that difference between the clotellum of the red wiggler and the clotellum of the Indian blue, uh, don't be uh, fooled by seeing a uh, juvenile red wiggler, which will not have a clotellum. So clotellum is, is, a tel, is, is a sign of sexual maturity. So if you've got a juvenile uh, red wiggler, uh, that may look more like an Indian blue because it doesn't have that, that raised clotellum just yet. Uh, but uh, anyway, guys, this may just satisfy your curiosity. It may actually also be the answer to why the hell are my worms trying to all escape my bin at the same time. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the next episode of Coffee and Compost.